I'm James Geary from North Coast Local Land Services and today I'm going to be talking about perennial pasture establishment. To renovate or establish a new perennial pasture requires a few steps to avoid wasting time and money. Step 1. Should you establish new or renovate old? Understanding your current desirable species in your pasture should give you a good understanding of whether you should be establishing or renovating. For example, if the current pasture contains 75% or more desirable species, consider not renovating and instead concentrate on management to boost productivity. If the pasture contains 40 to 75% desirable species, consider overseeding and concentrating on management. If the pasture contains less than 40% desirable species, consider complete re-establishment. Step two, soil testing. Are the species you wish to plant suitable for your soil type? And does your soil have the nutrition required to help the species thrive and grow successfully? Soil testing is a critical part of the process when determining whether to renovate a pasture, as there are some essential considerations to have in mind, such as your planned stocking rates and whether you will have a production demanded from your pasture. The higher the stocking rate and production required, the more elevated the plant's nutrient needs will be to maintain vigour and persistence. Soil testing also allows you to determine if your soil's fertility will match the needs of the pasture species you are looking to plant. Regular soil testing also helps determine fertiliser rates required to maintain pasture productivity. And so nutrient inputs match nutrient exports from a pasture. You can pick up a kit at your local land services office or New South Wales DPI office. Step three, species. Are the species you're wishing to plant suitable for your climate and or soil type? And are they suitable for your pet and or enterprise? Certain pasture species and varieties are suited to certain environments, such as temperate or tropical grasses, temperate or tropical legumes and pasture herbs. All have different rainfall requirements, soil requirements, sowing rates and sowing times, which are critical to the species' persistence and survival. Some species are better planted with others. Planting a legume, such as clover, will fix nitrogen in your soil that the grass species can utilise. The overall species you select to sow must also be suitable for your intended pasture purpose. Whether it is for your pet or production animals, you want to choose a species that will match the nutritional needs and feed demands. For example, some pasture is toxic to horses, but not for cattle. Hobby horses will have a lower feed demand than working horses. Having a high stocking rate means a higher feed demand. Your local land services or private agronomist can help you understand this. Step four, seeding method. Do you have the right equipment for the job? Sowing and seed bed preparation is one of the most important things to consider when renovating or establishing a new pasture. Seed soil contact is a critical part of the process when striving for excellent germination rates. The greater the seed soil contact, the higher the germination rate will be and the overall success of your pasture establishment. Different sowing techniques are suited to different situations. The three sowing techniques that achieve results include conventional, minimum to no-till and broadcasting. Conventional often delivers excellent germination and pasture establishment over other methods as seed soil contact is greater. However, cultivating encourages more weeds to germinate as the pasture grows, creating more competition for the seedlings. Different pasture species require different sowing depths. It is best to seek advice on the ideal sowing depth of the species desired and make sure your equipment has been set up correctly for accurate seed placement and spacing. Minimal till to no till situations. In minimal till to no till situations, pastures can be drilled into already existing pasture. With their well-developed root growth, already existing pastures will hinder seedling survival and germination. The success of this method can be enhanced by sowing when existing pastures are kept as low as possible at the time of sowing. Topping your already existing pasture with a sublethal dose of glyphosate before sowing pastures can enhance the survival of seedlings. Broadcasting seed of perennial pastures is the least preferred method, as broadcasting results in poor seed soil contact and poor germination. However, where one cannot access machinery, annual species such as ryegrass into a tropical pasture in autumn to achieve the best results. The cold temperatures will slow the growth of perennial pastures, giving annual species a chance to compete. To achieve the best germination rates, mow or graze beforehand, then allow cattle in for a couple of hours to trample in seeds to maximise seed soil contact. Step five, weed control. Do you have a weed control plan in place? 
Competition from weeds can be a significant issue and can impact successful establishment of perennial pastures. Therefore, it is essential to have a weed control program. When deciding to plant or renovate a perennial pasture, weed control should be thought out at least two years ahead. The aim is to reduce the weed seed bank in the soil through mechanical, chemical or grazing practices. Selective herbicides can be used to control weeds and should be used before weeds manage to set seed. Weeds can also be controlled through grazing strategies that maximise ground cover. Speak to your local land services or private agronomists about grazing strategies to suit your needs. Pasture blends are now becoming a popular choice, with many containing a legume species such as clover or a broadleaf species such as chicory. Weed control options in blends such as these are minimal or expensive, making weed control an important part of the preparation phase. A cropping program can also be useful in reducing weed populations. The success lies in planning ahead. Step 6 Management Plan Do you have a management plan in place to keep your pastures healthy and productive for many years to come? The key to long-term productivity of perennial pastures is good management. After the pasture is germinated, it is important not to graze too early as the pasture can be pulled out by grazing animals. It should be first grazed when plants have established sound root systems and are not easily pulled out. Short grazing intervals promotes tillering of new plants. It is essential to allow plants to set seed in the first year so a seed bank is produced of desirable species. Don't forget to do soil testing and fertilising on an as-needs basis. For more information, go to your local land services website.